What's up guys? Uh, so it's been about a month since my last video and uh, it's been about two months or so since my last update. So I figured it was about time for one um, and I got a lot of, I got a lot to update and talk about. So let's get into it. Um, first off, I apologize if I sound off at all. Um, I'm going through benzo withdrawal and it's just making everything run really fast and scary or than usual. <laughs> so apparently, um, well, the reason I'm going through it is because uh, my GP, Chris Murphy, um, I don't know if I've introduced you guys to G or to Chris. He's a uh, he's the GP I got right after I got out of Asante, the uh, psych ward I was in. Um, as soon as I got out of there, I saw him like that week or the week after, and I've been seeing him at least once a month ever since then. And uh, yeah, he's he's a great guy. He's my favorite uh, doctor I've had ever because uh, he's the closest I've had to my age. There's no way he's more than you know ten years older than me. So, uh, we, we click really well and we get each other given that we're, we're at least close to coming from the same generation. So that helps a lot when that's your doctor. Um, unfortunately he's not a head doctor and he's been wanting me to get set, set up with a psychiatrist and a therapist ever since I got out of Asante and I've been putting it off and I've been putting it off. But, um, he's been prescribing me the clonopin that I take ever since I got out of Houston. After I left Houston, that whole drive that I did up between um, Houston to here during my mute during my moving video um, I was taking 1 to 1.5 milligrams of Xanax a day um, now mind you all benzos are um, very they're pretty much interchangeable um, you don't you can just jump between them because the only real difference between them is the half-life and how and how quickly they kick in and how long the high of them last um, but they all pretty much do the same thing to, to your central nervous system so you can switch through them um, assuming it's a lot easier on your uh, body if you're going up in uh, half-life so Xanax which is where I was well, it has like an eight-hour half-life it has the shortest half-life of any of the benzos it's the most effective for like immediate um, attacks but uh, just for general lingering anxiety clonopin is the best thing to take because it has like a 48 to 50 hour half-life so I've been on the clonopin ever since um, I got with Chris I believe something tells me I was on it before then. Yeah, because Owen gave me his clonopin went because Owen knows all about the benzos and stuff. He's the one who told me about this, and he let me have his. He let me switch over to the clonopin he had left over because he's going through like uh, back and neck pain and stuff. So he can't he can't be mixing the uh, benzos with painkillers that he takes for his back. So um, he let me to have what was left of his clonopin at the time. Th again, this was like this was early in the year. So that's when I switched from the Xanax to Clonopin, and then ever since then, um, Chris has been keeping me on it. But yeah, he just cut me off cold turkey last time I saw him, which was early last month, on um, like the third or fourth. And uh, yeah, that it wasn't cool because there was no prior warning. There was no which is, but this is something that's apparently been happening here in the valley for like a minute now. Is people's doctors, even if they're really good doctors and they've been around and they've had their patient for a minute, uh, they'll just cut you off of a medication that you have a physical dependence on um, without any prior warning and without um, without a plan to properly taper you off for the withdrawal so yeah that's what I'm going through right now and I gotta make it till Monday which is about uh, well it's 9 yeah it's exactly 9 p.m. well 9.01 now p.m. like as I said that it switched uh, on Saturday so I gotta make it till Monday around noon. So I believe that's 30, 40 hours from now. Um, <clears throat> my last dosage was 0.5 milligrams of clonopin at 5 a.m. yesterday. So about 39 hours ago, I believe. And uh, yeah, I have. I have a little bit of indica weed, but there's, um, I've been, oh yeah, weed is totally legal here now. <laughs> At least bud is, so, like, just pure, like, bud. Not not concentrates and edibles, but, um, yeah, just actually just straight weed is totally legal here now. I've been buying from, uh, I've, been buy, I've been buying from dispensaries here, and, uh, yeah, this is just one of the bottles I have. I have, I have a couple more over here, but, uh... Yeah, I've just been writing on all of the, they come in these little pill bottles and I've been writing on all of like little blank spaces like what each one does. This one I still haven't really tried. This was 
this is early Willy's Wonder is, <laughs> but I've been just trying to stick to uh, indicas. Um, people will tell you that CBD weed will, because uh, I, I just go for like high THCs, but people will tell you CBD weed, like CBD is for if you want a body high and THC is if you want a head high. Look, from my experience, and I've smoked a lot of fucking weed, uh, that's not the case. Because look, if you smoke, this is a fact, if you smoke a no THC, all CBD weed, and it shows what, like on the bottle, what is in there. If you smoke like an all CBD weed and no THC in it, you're not going to get any effects. You're just going to be smoking a plant. Um, so... I really, I'm, I'd be lying to say that I know exactly what CBD does. I know it's for, I know it has a lot of medical value, um, but it's not gonna do much for you as far as just getting fucking high goes. Don't let people trick you into like, oh, I want a body high, so I need CBD. Now, the reason I've been talking about this because I've been dealing with people <laughs> a lot lately who are like, oh, I just want to smoke that high CBD, and then I'll like, I'll walk into the dispensary and I'm gonna try something, but anything that's like high CBD is already fucking out of there because everybody has this misconception that it equals a body high. No, all weed is gonna give you a fucking head high. That's where your body feeling comes from is your head, stupid. That's how it affects the rest of it. <laughs> anyway, when I was at my doctor's appointment, or let me finish saying what I was saying with this. I have this, um, and I have a couple more strains downstairs, um, and then I uh, I have ten milligram tablets of propranolol. I have point uh, five milligram tablets of Seroquel. Now the Seroquel will knock me out for a good five, six, seven hours, but um, that doesn't make me immune to seizures, which is what I'm most afraid of right now. Um, in fact, it's why I've, I didn't actually plan on making this video tonight, but I, you know, I needed to talk. I needed to stop being so internal. So here's me doing that, being productive in the same, <clears throat> at the same time. Um, I've actually been writing my ass off. I've been writing a lot of fucking music, but um, I'm still in the process. Of, as you can see, I got this wall, I got this wall, and I got this one right in front of me. And I still need to do the whole ceiling and stuff and these back doors and all that. But um, I'm acoustic foaming the whole, the whole fucking room. And um, I'm going to invest in a, because I've been using the Studio Projects mics, the B1 and the C1, since I started rapping. Um, well, since I started recording rapping anyway, here on YouTube. So uh, it's time to upgrade to a mic that is more suitable for my vocal range, because I do a lot of yelling and stuff, and I do a lot of high, uh, I do a lot of fucking shit with my voice. And uh, it's not just your typical ABC rapping anymore. So... As such, I need a mic that can take care, that can handle what I do to it. So, uh, I'm investing in a blue bottle as soon as I can afford it. But it's like a three grand mic. You can, it's really like four grand, but you can get it for like 3.5 on eBay. I saw a guy who wanted it for 3.5 because he wanted to buy his wife an engagement ring. So, I want to invest in that. And, uh, and I got a UA7167 to run it through. Or 6176. Still waiting on it to get here, but I got that from eBay, and that was that was really cool. Um, so yeah, I got that, and then I got, um, I just got your regular like under the counter or medicine cabinet. I I put all my medicine cabinet stuff under the sink, but I got all your regular uh, medicine cabinet amenities. So I got like Tylenol and and ibuprofen and like Nyquil and those kind of things stomach acid relievers those kind of things so if you have any um the reason i'm listing the things that i have is because if you have any um advice please put it in the comments below i know i know i know i fucking hate what youtube has become where it's like acceptable to be doing this shit for money so like people are like please comment like and subscribe like with like shamelessly now and i really don't like that but look when i say please comment that's really all i do this for i've never earned a penny in my almost 10 years of youtube i've never earned a penny from a single one of these videos um, at least not through just you guys viewing it. Um, trust me, I, tr as a person who's been doing it since YouTube started, um, these videos are not worth getting paid for. And don't let somebody lie to you and tell you that they need your, uh, uh, they need you to watch it and turn off your ad block and do all this shit so that they can have motivation to do videos. Now, if I now if there's somebody who, like a crazy content uh, creator who makes you know shit that takes a lot of work, I could see that. But as somebody who just vlogs and makes videos like this um it's not worth getting paid for especially because i fucking like it i like making videos 
let me get into what I wanted to talk about. About uh, I keep getting sidetracked, and I'm, I'm almost through the first part here. I passed out at my uh, at my last doctor's appointment at the beginning of last month on like the third or fourth, and that wasn't cool. I went and I got my flu shot. Like everything was cool. I was telling Murphy about everything, and that that was the day he cut me off. So I was kind of accepting that. But it's the first time I've ever I've ever passed out just for like no reason. It seemed. Well, I mean, I know there was a reason, but I didn't see it coming. I've had syncope. Um, I've had like self-induced syncope on uh, just due to anxiety twice. Like I passed out due to anxiety twice, and I've, um, uh, you know, I've passed out due to like too much Molly, but I've never passed out just chilling. But I got a flu shot, and because uh, I've submitted ever since I moved here, and I've I've been doing everything to get in proper health. I've what I told myself early on was I'm submitting myself to the mercy of the people who have dedicated their lives to being the people you go to for these kind of things, for, for, to being the people you go to for medical problems. So when my doctor recommends that I get something, I'm going to fucking do it because he's dedicated his life to being the guy you go to for that. And uh, I would have a lot more solace if I'm somehow conscious after this and that there's some sort of after consciousness life thing, I don't know. Um, if I'm able to think back on this, I'd, I'd, I feel like I would take a lot more solace in knowing that I died uh, following the doctor's orders than disobeying them, I guess, is what it comes down to. So, um, he told me to get a flu shot, and I did, and uh, it was right after, our, our, after we talked and I updated him on what I was doing and everything, and I walked into... Uh, I walked up to the front to pay the lady, to pay Sarah, the receptionist. She's she's very cute. I actually kind of like her. But uh, I told I, I was talking to Sarah, and luckily I was just chatting her up a little bit because I was about to get in the car, which would have been very bad. I was telling... All I remember... Okay, <laughs> I'm just going to tell you what I remember from this point on because I'm trying to describe it like a story, but you can't do that, okay? So let me just tell you what I know from this point on. Um... I looked at her like she like I gave her my card to pay for the appointment or whatever and she's going to get my receipt out of like a little receipt thing that like spits it out uh, out a little machine and I just look at her and I said Sarah I'm not feeling too good bro I just looked at her I said Sarah I I I don't feel too good I don't even remember what we were talking about I just know that I interrupted it really abruptly to say that she was just talking about something I was like Sarah I don't feel too good bro (laughs) and uh, next thing I remember is just waking up it's just not waking up just coming to um, looking at the carpet and just seeing all these feet around me and I didn't know what to do with it because I lacked the ability to comprehend it was really really fucked up so the first thing I started saying I just started repeat like I just started repeating like am I dead am I dead am I dead am I dead luckily I saw the shoes of of Chris walk out of the front door not the door but like the door that I came out of to walk in around to the receptionist desk into the waiting room he comes out of there, out of the back, and I see him walking towards me, and I, it was just like this feeling of like an angel. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, I'm going to be okay. And he said, no, you're not dead, you're going to be okay. And he, he, he took me back into another room, and they gave me apple juice and stuff. And they said it was because I, uh, I just had low blood sugar. But, yeah, I'm sick again anyway, so it didn't really do much. I mean, I, I don't have the flu, but I got like a lung infection, in case you haven't noticed, so... <laughs> uh, yeah. But yeah, I passed the fuck out, and all I remember is just like it's just suddenly there being carpet. I just remember being like, "Yo, Sarah, I don't feel too good," and then suddenly there's carpet. There's suddenly just carpet in front of me, which had the carpet in the waiting room there. The it's so weird. Um, so I just remember there just being feet around me, and I was like, "Yo." what's going on here? Am I dead or what's going on? And they said that I hit my head on the way down, but I don't believe I did because it was actually my back that hurt the whole day afterwards and my head felt fine. So I don't believe it was, I don't believe I hit my head luckily, but I definitely hit the bench that was behind me on the way down and that didn't feel good. But, uh, yeah, I passed the fuck out there in the waiting room (laughs) at my last doctor's appointment. That's what happened. Um, I got, uh, let, let me go on to the next video before I get into the next topic. Uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video.